So would you say from the study of near-death experience that there is a message, a general message from the near-death experience to organized religion? There's a general message from the near-death experience to everyone, not just organized religion. I, I would not narrow it down to just organized religion. I would say for everyone. And it's a number of messages. It's not just one message. If, you, if you're going to say there's, there's one message, then you would have to say that message is the message of love. That, that if you're going to concentrate everything down to, to one feeling, one power, one sense of what it's all about and who we are, it would be the phrase love. It would be that idea of love. Um, so that would be the great message. But I also think the great message is that there really is a God, or a, a higher power, or a greater intelligence, whatever you want to call that, that there really is a God. Because clearly, between right around 90% of the people come back head over heels in love with God. It doesn't matter if you were an atheist before doesn't matter if you're an agnostic before, doesn't matter what your faith tradition was before, or if you didn't even have one. They come back head over heels in love with God. So that's across the board. So we're talking love. We're talking God. But the messages from the near-death experience go even further than that. They're saying, we are divine. We are divine beings having a human experience, not the other way around. And in our divinity, we are children of God. We are co-creators with the Creator. And if you go to the Christian Bible, which many people are familiar with, it says in the Bible in numerous passages, ye are gods in the making. The Bible doesn't fool around with that. It comes right out and says it numerous times. You are gods in the making. Um, certainly the near-death experience um, takes that phrase, that message, and sort of ex um, and just proclaims that it's true. It's absolutely true. And, and you say, well, why are he, we here on earth? Many will come right back and say to be co-creators with the Creator. That's our purpose. And if you look at the human family, the near-death experiences, among the messages of the near-death experience to the human family, regardless of race, regardless of tradition, regardless of culture, is that not only are you divine, not only do you come from a higher power that is the one great light, if you want to call it that way, not only are you love incarnate, but you are capable of far more than you think you are, that uh, your faculties alone can expand and do far more things than you think you can. I mean, sometimes we call that being psychic. Psychic has nothing to do with it. It is the faculties in your body, faculties normal to us, after a near-death experience, expand and enlarge. And that's where what we call psychic comes from, is the expansion of faculties normal to us. Um, <clears throat> if, if I just look at, at my research, just my research, I'm one of the original researchers in the field of near-death studies. I began my work in 1978. I now have nearly 4,000 adults and children that I have had sessions with. If I just look at my own research base, The number one phrase that most experiencers say when they come back is four words. It doesn't matter the country, they're saying the same four words. And those four words are, 
always there is life. Always there is life. If you really hang with that, think about that, let it sift in and through your body, then that's saying that there is no such thing as an afterlife. There's no such thing as a before life. The only reality is always there is life in some form, in some dimension, in some realm, in some place. Always you are alive, which means eternity can be counted on. Nobody lied to us. None of our great messiahs or avatars or psychics or gifted spiritual people. Nobody lied to us. It's the truth. <laughs>